Well, <laughs> thanks, Ms. Chen. Uh, it's it's really something very um, a, a very amazing feeling because um, I grew up here, as you know, uh, since I was six. That was I don't know how many years ago. <laughs> but I, I always say Melbourne School is my uh, second home because I since young I was here uh, coming for weekly lessons and then um, performing every you know every every year in, in the year end concerts and stuff. Um, I have some photos here uh, when I was young. Wow. Uh, <laughs> He's the drummer. <laughs> yeah, I still remember when I played the drum on, on the concert or something, it fell. Oh, really? Or something and it scared me quite <laughs> And then we have also uh, on this very piano. Uh, another one. Yeah, some of the early photos. Can you see Bernard? Bernard, the show there? Maybe my first time accompanying someone. Uh, as you know, now now I'm a I'm a professional collaborative pianist who worked with uh, singers and worked with instrumentalists. Uh, I think in black. So, uh, so yeah, so I'm here to share with you my journey, growing up here, uh, going further to um, the United Kingdom. I went to Birmingham to do my masters for two years, and then to Michigan to finish my uh, doctorate. And I just finished it uh, this year, uh, just in time before the pandemic. So not back. Um, so yeah, I had a lot of uh, early memories, and uh, I want to sh I want to share in terms of playing uh, one of the one of the pieces that I loved a lot when I when I learned. And um, but I, I don't think I don't think I performed this here before. But uh, it's a piece that I don't know. Sometimes, sometimes kids just you know some piece just strikes them as being wow, this, uh, this is so cool. I really like playing this. So this is a spinning song. Until now, so this is uh, the pieces are the best.
Yeah, so many of you uh, know that I, when, when I started learning here, I started with Louis Chen, and, uh, along the, and then uh, when I got to around 15, I think, um, I went to study with Mr. Wood. Uh, but actually before that, Vishen actually was really encouraging and um, has many times uh, encouraged me to go to Mr. Wood, but um, being a little boy, I, I refused. Uh, <laughs> um, and, and it wasn't until uh, once, uh, again, it was the, the, the year-end year -end concert kind of thing when uh, I, heard, uh, I heard Jane Song performed a piece from the Phantom of the Opera. And I thought to myself, I want to learn singing, you know? So I said, I said to Michelle, I want to learn singing. Okay, sure, that, let's start next, next month. You know, next month, let's start. First time having voice lessons, uh, Michelle brought me up all the way here. And I was wondering, why, huh? <laughs> and then it's Mr. The Wood. <laughs> but um, I really want to thank, thank Michelle for her dedication because she was so dedicated. She knew I was, I was, uh, I refused many times, but um, in the beginning, she actually sat in the lesson with me, um, you know, to help ease the pressure. Um, but uh, eventually, yeah, um, there, there was uh, there was a, a transition, and then I got to learn some singing, and that also got me further to working with working with singers and going into operas and those kind of things. Um, and so, uh, and so, I want to I want to perform two uh, songs, uh, actually to sing two songs, sing and play two songs uh, by Costi. Okay, um, the first one is called Vore Morire, uh, which is a beautiful song um, about someone wanting to rest um, his soul in the most beautiful time of. The season where you know the sky is blue, the flowers are blooming, um, and then the second song is more sort of an Italian passionate one, uh, Maria, um, which means spell. So, uh, so this guy is singing that this this girl is like a spell that that just he just cannot escape. Uh, we have some text here, uh, so if you wanna, you can just follow on. So that the little ones can understand. So, okay, change Chinese. <laughs> 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 so this song, uh, the song, these two songs are all Costi written. The first song, Vore Mori, he says, "Ah, a person, ah, at the age of old age, he hopes to be able to live in a very beautiful." 最最漂亮的一年里面当中最漂亮的那个季节，然后天天是蓝的，然后呃花开的时候，呃跟呃让让让他的灵魂安息这样子的一首歌。第二首歌是玛利亚，就是呃 spell， 呃 spell， <笑> you know， 呃、uh, <笑>。<笑>就基本上就是唱着这这一个女生，这一个女生就好像一个好像一个魔咒这样子，就就吸引着她。Okay. 
Yeah, so I went to uh, University of Putra, Malaysia in Serdam to do my um, to do my bachelor degree. And um, during that time, um, I got because I got into singing and voice um, voice lessons before. I was very interested to you know accompany and work with singers in operas, and so um, I got to know you know some of uh, very famous singers locally. One of which is uh, Ethan, who I who I accompanied in. Um, the the annual national competition that year and uh, she won uh, the so so we had the regional sort of central region Zhong Ma Chu and then Quan Guo Sai so uh, she won and then uh, that was that was kind of like first time I felt you know really really joyful because I am the one who is playing for for these singers so. Uh, that, that got me very much into uh, trying to accompany people and um, you know to, to, to work with singers and, and explore opera and um, art songs. And so then I decided to apply to do collaborative piano. So collaborative piano is a, a, a sort of section of specialization um, of piano playing where you uh, essentially work with playing with another person. So playing with a singer, playing with an instrumentalist, so hence collaborative. And, um, and so I, I applied to uh, the UK to do, to do my masters and very glad to, being, uh, to, to get a scholarship to Royal Birmingham Conservatoire to do to two years. Of master's program, um, going into UK was a very, actually quite a humbling journey because when you when you are out there, you feel like um, there are there there's so much more that you don't know um, because you you are out there and then, you know they have they have a different culture of music. They have um, they actually have this thing called the junior conservatoire. So, so where we study, we study, you know, uh, bachelor degree, masters, and PhD in the music conservatoire. But they have the junior conservatoire where the kids actually come to learn their instruments, but also to play in orchestra because they have so many people. So, and and so then they play in orchestra, they play chamber music, they sing in choir and stuff like that. So essentially, using that sort of uh, facilities. Growing up, you know, learning music, so that was that was really, really something very eye-opening, um, and of course, being a Malaysian, you know, every time we, every time we speak, we mix here and there, you know, different languages are uh, mixed Chinese, uh. Then you, <laughs> then I went to went to the UK the first time. I had to speak pure English, um, you know. Sometimes you in a conversation, you you speak, 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 and then all of a sudden, oh, this thing I use a Malay word. So what is this in English? You know, uh, and there was also a very interesting experience because of the the word usage of the the, the British people and versus American. So once I was with a singer, whom I'll introduce after this later, uh, we we went to a, a festival in Leeds, um, a, a song festival. So the, the day before that, the day be before uh, our performance, I realized I didn't bring my trousers for the performance. So I went to, went to his room, I said, Andrew, I forgot my pants. Uh, and he was like, mate, it's fine, just wear the same. And I was like, what do you mean wear the same? I didn't bring my pants. And he said, oh, you mean trousers. Pants for them is underwear. <laughs> so that, that was very funny because he was like, why are you telling me this? <laughs> um, and so that brings me to, to Andrew. Um, 
very, very nice uh, relationship, you know, uh, because when I first got to Birmingham, uh, he started his master's as well. And we said, and I asked him, do you want to work on uh, Schumann? Schumann is a very famous uh, song cycle called Dichter Liebe. Do you want to work on that together? He said, yeah, sure, let's, let's work on that. And then we, we started working, and then we just stuck to each other when we, when we perform. Um, so that was a very nice uh, sort of working relationship. You, you feel like you are connected to someone when you are when you have performed with them over a certain period of time, and so um, and so that was that was our our um, our experience. We went to went to different festivals, went to competitions together. Uh, we even we even had the same bag and uh, phone. Uh, well, it, 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 it was quite coincid, coincid, in, coincidental because uh, that was his bag uh, that I'm using. So uh, <laughs> it was funny that we had the same bag. So we, we, we were like, oh, this is, you know, singer and pianist, uh, you know, true duo um, kind of thing. So that, that, was, that was very interesting. Um, so in the in the UK, I had two teachers. One is um, a German, Jan Löffler, his name. Uh, he helped me a lot with uh, playing techniques and stuff like that. Uh, one one song which uh, which takes two or three minutes to perform, he would talk about that for the whole lesson for for the whole hour. Uh, you know, he's he's that meticulous, and he he gave me quite a lot of Good tips, but the the teacher I want to mention is uh, Robin. <clears throat> Robin was a uh, was very was very kind and uh, very supportive. He he was very enthusiastic about helping the students, and it, it, it was because of him that I got into a summer program in Scotland. Uh, that middle of that year, um, because they they actually opened up a, a full scholarship for a singer and pianist duo to to be there, and Robin wrote them an email saying that hey you should consider Bernard and Andrew you know they they accepted that just like that they didn't even want to hear how how well we play or sing uh, they just accepted us and hence I went out I was able to be in that summer program. And because of that summer program, I got to know someone who eventually introduced me to, uh, to apply to Michigan, which was, you know, uh, which was a quite, quite a special thing if you think about it. You know, one thing leads to the other, and, and hence, you know, being able to stand here myself, I'm just eternally grateful for all, all these people along the way. <coughs> Um, so a little bit about what really I do as a collaborative pianist. Because we work with singers so much, and when we play, we have to be able to listen to them when, when we are playing. And hence, one of the skills that, are, that is um, very, uh, very much emphasized is to be able to play and sing simultaneously. Even even the very difficult, uh, complicated piece of music. And um, the next, the, the two pieces that I'm going to play and sing for you are the songs that was uh, asked by Martin Katz, who was my teacher in University of Michigan, for my audition. So in, in the audition, he specifically asked me to play and sing these two songs and see if I can can do it. Because if you think about it, if you are able to sing everything when you are playing, that means that if there's a singer playing or singing with you, you are able to listen to the singer all the time. So hence you, you won't be you know, in, in your own sort of bubble of you know, make sure I play all the right notes and stuff and then forget that you are playing with a singer. And so um, this is a skill that uh, I was really trained to, uh, to be able to have. And so these two songs are from Schubert's very famous uh, cycle, Winterizer. <clears throat> 
first one is called numbness. Um, this guy has lost his love, and it's winter and it's a lot of snow. He's trying to search for something pos uh, something positive. Try to try to find a a bud of flower. Try to find some grass. Cannot find. Um, and then the second one is a very famous one called uh, the Lindenbaum, which is the linden tree. Um, the tree reminds him of uh, past memory, but essentially, uh, but essentially, he doesn't want to stop moving. You know, he, he has been walking in the snow uh, all this while after after losing his love. So he, he wants to keep moving and ignore what the what the tree is trying to call him to. Um, so, 接下来两首歌, 呃, 一首是, 如, 如, 如果你发现我, 我中文语有点formal, 哦, 是因为, 是因为我, 我在外国的时候一直跟中国人啊,台湾人打交道, 所以就, 所以在台上说话的时候就会有一点, 有一点太正式的感觉, 可是, 呃, 接下来两首歌是第一首是, 呃, 第一首是在讲的这个人在雪中行走因为他的爱人已经离开他了所以他就很伤心他就一直这样子的前进然后尝试要找一些乐观的东西小小的一根草也好一朵花也好可是他找不到那是第一首歌第二首歌是 Linden tree 就是橄榄树对吧橄榄树所以这棵树让他回想起之前的那些回忆然后可是他说我要前进我要继续离开这个地方
thank you. So eventually I auditioned for uh, University of Michigan. Actually America wasn't actually my choice when I auditioned um, after my masters. But because I had read uh, this book, The Complete Collaborator, uh, which is a very important book actually, uh, sort of a bible for collaborative pianists, where it, uh, Martin Hetz wrote a lot about how you uh, collaborate with singers, what to, look, what to look out for, how to breathe with them, um, the same goes to when you play for instruments. And um, I knew that he, he was teaching in University of Michigan, but um, when I, I remember looking on the website, I, I look at the requirements and stuff, I thought to myself, I don't think I can get in. I don't think I can get in. So, so, so then I didn't, I didn't actually think much about applying to University of Michigan. But uh, it was at that, um, that summer program in Scotland that I told you, I met uh, this guy called Nico, who was Martin's student uh, about 10 years ago. So he said, you know, just send him an email. The worst reply that you can get is no. So why not try? So I tried and then he said, yeah, I want to listen to you. So I was, I was uh, surprised, but very happy. Um, but he was, he, he, he was in America, so it was it was quite far, and so it was a it was a budget to you know buy flight tickets to fly there just to audition. So he suggested, why not come to Paris because he was giving a concert in Paris, and I was in the UK, so I can just take a train from London to Paris, very easy. Uh, so I did that and played for him. Um, there was there was quite a long time waiting because that, that audition was in December and then um, the real audition in University of Michigan was in February. So I had to wait for all these months to know my results. So uh, that was that was very a very difficult wait but eventually I got the news that um, that that I got in. And you know because of the time difference um, I got the email at midnight in uh, in England and obviously very excited and I I couldn't sleep until maybe four o'clock uh, that night so uh, Martin Pets is a very enthusiastic teacher um, you go to his photo um, a big contrast from my teacher in the UK because my teacher in the UK is like that and then he's like here so <laughs> he's a very legendary uh, icon because he has worked with many very famous, um, very famous singers. Uh, if you are into opera at all, you know um, Jose Carreras, Renata Tabaldi, um, Marilyn Horn, all these big names he has collaborated with. So um, when I when I went to University of Michigan, it was kind of like you know going to Hogwarts, you know, um, it, this uh, an amazing place uh, to learn. And um, he he was very 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 dedicated, but also very very stern and uh, quite intense. Um, you know, uh, but we have a very nice studio, so all all of his. All of his, his students, we are all very supportive of each other. Um, this is the last batch that we had. Um, he always he always organizes you know parties and stuff for us to come, and then he will, he will offers a lot of beers and wines and um, very different from when he's in school. When he's in school, you play one thing wrong, you know, huh? Then he'll go, he'll he'll be really really uh, stern about it. Um, but we're, we're very supportive of each other, which is a very nice relationship to have in in a sort of environment where where we actually all of us, because of his um, because of Martin's position in the university, all of his students get full scholarship. 
but also uh, also mm -hmm. what we call an assistantship, which means uh, that you have to work for the university. And good thing is that we work, you know, uh, just to play play for people. Uh, you are still working that instead of you know office stuff and paperwork and things like that. So that was that was good. So all of us had very very active ha hectic lives because. Uh, we have to do our studies, but we have also have to work. Um, and then, obviously, because you're a scholarship uh, receiver, they expect you to be really, really up there. And uh, and so, all of us, it, it's good that all of us support each other very well. And um, being being kind of like a family, so it's 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 very nice. So the the main thing I did there was um, playing in. Uh, in opera productions, coaching singers. Um, so, if you notice, uh, if you notice my first slide, I said I'm a, an opera repetitor. Uh, you might wonder what that means. Opera repetitor, repetitor actually is a term that comes from the French word répéter, which means to repeat or to rehearse. So, it, it was traditionally someone who rehearses music with the singers in an opera house. So you know, when, when they are preparing for an opera, they have to first make sure that the singers are solid in terms of music, they have to memorize all the music. So it is all our job uh, behind the piano to, to rehearse the music with them, remind them if they have sung a wrong word, or remind them if they have memorized a, a wrong phrase, um, suggest musical things, and hence that uh, that job has established to be a very uh, specialized job. And so, my, my work was to look at what was essentially originally for the whole orchestra, 60 people, reduced down to 10 fingers, um, and, and play them and make sure that they are still, they are still portraying what the orchestra is, uh, is playing. Because when you're preparing for the singer, preparing the singer for the, the rehearsals, they, they, have to be, they have to be ready to sing with the orchestra. You know, they, they can't be, be surprised when they go to the orchestra and say, oh, wait, I didn't hear this line because of when my pianist didn't play. You know, so, um, so it's our job sometimes to add in more voices in the parts, sometimes to, but then, you know, when you add in, there, there becomes a lot of notes, so you, you have to figure out how to make it work as a pianist, that kind of thing. So, um, so at, at the end of this, this sharing, I would like, I'm very happy to have Helen to sing two um, arias here. Um, thank you, Mr. Woon, to put, put, put this, um, uh, to connect us. Um, so, to show you what I actually do. I don't. I don't just play and sing all the time. I don't do that. <laughs> I play the piano with the singer, um, and so happened that these two arias are originally for the orchestra. So the things that that I do as a pianist they are different. Um, <clears throat> so the first aria is from uh, an opera by Sansons called Samson and Delilah. You know the the story of Samson and Delilah in the Bible. In this aria, Delilah is trying to seduce Samson, and um, and in an opera, when a seduction happens, it's always a success. Okay, there's no failed seduction in operas <laughs> because of, of the music. Um, so, so in this aria, Saint Saint was very, very clever in in his um, way of writing for the orchestra. So you will hear two, uh, you will hear a section which is kind of like a refrain or um, a chorus in the pop song term, um, where it comes back uh, another time. So the first time, the first time Delilah is singing quite sort of like by herself because the orchestra is very very plain. Only the harp is accompanying uh, Delilah singing that that that. Whole refrain. That whole refrain, she's saying, respond to my tenderness, um, make me feel feel intoxicated. Okay, 
and obviously Samson will be will, will fall into that trap eventually. But the first refrain, not so much. You know, a very simple accompaniment. And then the second refrain, the whole strings in the orchestra plays with, uh, with Delilah. And Samson also sings at that time. And all the woodwinds play with Samson. So you know at that time it's just, you know, uh, things have happened. <laughs> so, um, Helen, thank you.
there it is. Thank you so much for being here. But I want to say something. Uh, it, it seems like it seems like I haven't mentioned this, but uh, we say save the best for last. I want to thank my parents. They're here, and they. Very supportive since um, my first, very first piano lessons, and this is the very reason why I can be here. I can have um, all these um, opportunities to uh, to go on to to England and then to America to finish my studies. And if it wasn't because of their support, I won't be here. So 